Hello everyone and thank you for your patience while we sort out a few things here. Welcome back to the 1230 breakout session in Breakout Zone 1 for the Arts and Community Track. As a reminder to our in-world and web audiences, you can view the full conference schedule on our website at conference.opensimulator.org. You can post your questions in local chat, I'll pick them up here, on the Ustream chat or tweet your comments using the hashtag OSCC13. This hour, we're happy to introduce Opal Lay, who will be presenting Enhancing Depth in Your Virtual World Photos. This, to me, is one of the great things about being able to take photos in a virtual world, and it's going to be very interesting to learn how to make them even better. Whether you still take photos for your personal mementos, for a blog, or your virtual business, depth adds realism and interest to your images. Learn how to use standard photography tricks and the tools in the Firestorm Viewer to enhance the illusion of depth even before you edit your image. Opal will illustrate concepts with examples from her 365 project, Where's Dim Sum? Opal Lay, a.k.a. Leah Tesoro, I hope I said that right, you can correct me when you start talking, is a former software professional who thought she could successfully apply her MBA in a virtual world business, but instead ended up doing more artistic stuff like di digital contact creation, photography, and machinima. She is a recognized expert on stereoscopic framing. She wrote a book about relationships in virtual worlds, and she still doesn't know what she wants to be when she grows up. Hi, I hear you there, Opal. Uh, please join me in a warm welcome for Opal. Take it away, Opal. Thank you, Buffy. Um, hello, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started very quickly here. Um, the the client that I'll be using is Firestorm. We'll be talking about that mostly because, and I'll explain why later. But first, let's uh, get go over to the first um, slide. What we're what you're going to learn today is. Um, how your two eyes see depth. This is really just a background about how stereo, how stereo viewing, uh, how stereo vision uh, works. And then we'll talk about how we see depth in 2D, in, in regular still photo photographs. And then um, the, we'll get to the meat of the, the presentation today, is, which is how to simulate depth in 2D still, message, still images with um, inside a virtual world. And this can apply either in Second Life or in open OS grid, grids or um, any other virtual reality worlds. Um, and we'll, we'll do that. We'll go over some of the, actually, some of the about five of um, the aspects, the concepts that are related to depth but um, and again I'll mention I'll talk about why we use Firestorm it is because they have the photo tools um, dialogues which make it very so very easy to get the settings done um, first we'll talk about what stereo vision is on the left side um, whoops on the left side of the screen once it comes up for you um, you'll see an overhead view of my head with um, two globes. One is close by to my head and another is farther away. And you'll see two lines converging towards the, each of the globes. Um, what you'll notice is that the lines that are going to the closer globe, as you'll see on the right side, they have a wider angle between them. Whereas the lines going into the further the farther globe are narrower. This is how the brain sees distance. It's, it sees the differences in those, uh, in the comparison between the left eye view and then the right eye view. And so it knows where the, where the, the um, image of where the object is relative to everything else around it. And I'll show you um, the next, in the next slide I'll show you the this is what it looks like inside my avatar with my eyelashes. We'll assume that my eyelashes are my eyes. We'll just see where it is. Um, and this is the setup. So this is, there's a closer globe, the globe that's closer to me and the globe that's farther away. The globes are actually the same size. And on and and this, this slide, you'll see the view from the left eye. 
I have my um, eyelashes on the center of the screen here. And this is the view, and I'll, we'll, I'll, we'll put this all together in a little bit. Um, you'll see that the view has tilted slightly. And in the next slide, we'll, we'll cover it up because we'll just, um, we'll, we'll come back to that to the, a little bit later. And this is the view from the right eye. So you see how it shifted and we'll cover that up. We'll, we'll show that as red and let's put it all together. Um, and you see that there's a distance, you'll see the distance here more obviously. Um, the, the distance between the red edge, the edge of the red circle and the edge of the uh, blue circle is wider with the globe that's closer to us. Now, how do you see it in 2D? There are different, it's really just an illusion. It, it, your brain kind of figures it out. And the, the, the way that it figures it out, it, out, it out, figures it out, I'm sorry. The way that it figures it out is through different, different things so that it doesn't look like um, it's just a flat image. Your brain knows that it's a, a 3D, that there's depth in there. Um, and we'll go through this one by one, but let me just go over that, um, what we have right now. First is convergence, and we'll talk about that um, more in detail. The second is through collision, and you probably already heard what that what that is. Collision is where things are just overlapping over each other. And also their position on a plane. Um, the third is, is are the shaders and shadows, and some people think that that's, that's just to make it look nicer, but it's actually giving the brain hints about the shape of the object, the 3D shape of the object, and the distance of the object. And the fourth is atmosphere. That's mostly about wind light, and we'll talk about that too. And then the, the fifth is depth of field, or DOF. It makes it really, it makes it, um, some people think that it's just a, a, an effect, but it actually also helps in depth perception. And another way to, f to figure out what depth is, which is not in, um, which is not really going to be covered today because that's more like how we perceive it inside a virtual world where we move around the object and you can see the other sides of it and then you, your brain figures out that it, yes, it's a, it's a 3D object. Um, but we're not going to cover that today because it's, it doesn't really apply. It's more for machinima or something like that or, or normal walking around. Um, as I said, my, my, my focus here is, let me just say this because um, I know that this, might, this is going to be recorded and therefore other people will probably be seeing this in the future after the viewer has changed a lot. So the, I'm using version 4.4.2, build 34167 for, of Firestorm. And Firestorm has two versions now. It has one that's an SL only version and another that's an open SIM version. So you want to make sure that you install the open SIM version. So environment settings, I, I'm just going to go through this briefly. This is how you get to the menus that we're going to be talking about. Um, I can make the slides available later also so you can have this as reference. So if you want environment very uh, environment settings, what you want to do is go into the world menu and then go down to the environment editor and choose environment settings. There's another easier way to um, get there. Oh, thank you, Buffy. So, so there's, there's another easier way to get there, and I'll show you that in a little bit. This, this is why uh, Firestorm is what I prefer to use, um, because of the easier way. But this is how you can get it in other clients. It, they're pretty much about the same, about the same way. And you can also uh, do edits or create new settings, new wind light settings and new water settings by going to, also in the world menu, go to um, again, in environment, oh, I'm sorry, I'm lost here, um, and choose the, uh, choose, I can't see my slides, I'm sorry, and choose um, sky settings, sky presets, and you can create some um, or, or edit an existing one. But I'll show you how to do this faster in, in if you're using Firestorm. Um, 
if you um, we're also going to talk about okay, okay this is the easier, easier way to get to um, something to the, to the dialogue that's that's faster where you have a lot of your photo photography photography tools in one place so you can use the photo and video option in the world menu and either and choose photo tools that would have everything that you need in there um, I'm also highlighting the camera tools here because we'll also use that to move around usually what I do is I move the focus on where I want the, the the I want it to be clear because I use a lot of, of DOF of depth of field um, and but I want it sometimes I want it off center of course for composition and that's then then I focus on that and use camera tools to move um, to move it around in the screen so you're going to need that also you can also get the menu from the if you have your icon bars in the bottom um, you, you do it by right clicking on the icon bar and then choose toolbar buttons and th these are the ones that you would want photo tools and photo tools camera which are surrounded by the red box there and this is what the photo tools dialog looks like there's actually several tabs in there and the, the, the top one is the one on the left and several ones um, in the back and we'll go through some of them today because I'm going to show you the settings that are going to affect um, uh, your composition that that we need for depth so with that now that we've got the basics behind us um, we're going to talk about the first aspect that makes an, um, an, uh, an illusion, that creates an illusion of depth, and that's convergence. And sometimes it's called vanishing point because if you, if you imagine uh, a grid around you, like in the picture there, um, all the, all the um, lines are, are going towards the back, towards the background, will be vanishing or eventually converging towards one point until where it all disappears, where it all meets. So that's one one way that um, you can tell distance. The you can also have, um, but of course you're not always going to have lines. So you sometimes would have same the same things in a row, but receding to the background, and that would also give you depth. And I'll show you some examples from my um, from my 365 project. And you can also have different sizes of the same things. So let me go and um, bring up. some pictures oh no oh no i'm crashing oops okay just my graphics card okay i think i'm out um let me give buffy my <laughs> links Okay. One moment. I'm sorry about this. I lost my um, notes too. It crashed with it. Okay. Okay, Buffy has the first link. There will be a lot of these links, though. Um, in in this, um, actually, I'm going to show you a lot of these links, and I can. Buffy, would it be okay if we just uh, copy and pasted it on the chat so they can also just go directly to um, the website? Okay, because if it's just in the chat, it might be easier than putting it up on the on the board there. Um, what you'll see in this ones are examples of uh, things that are going towards the the vanishing point, and it, it might be a bridge, or it might be um, a dock, or it could be a tunnel. Um, 
So things like this would would show you that would 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 give an illusion of depth. So you have to focus on you have to oh sorry you have to um, it, it, it's if you if you could don't put them in just one line in the foreground is what I guess what I'm trying to say here. So try to angle your composition so that you have lines that are going towards the back. Going towards the vanishing point, and that gives you a better um, illusion of depth. Um, a lot of this will be dependent on your composition. So this is one of those one of those composition things. It's not really a technical thing. Um, I'll also also show you starting with uh, Newton's cradle, where you can have um, a row of different things, but they're similar, they're actually the same things, I'm sorry, they're the same things, but they're going towards the distance, so that it looks like, so that you also have that vanishing point thing. It doesn't really have to be um, all vanishing entirely, it can just be a short distance, and it will, it will already give you some depth there. And um, I'll, I'm also showing you some, I'll also show you some starting with arches through arches there are some objects uh, for example like the arches that you only have i only have two in the same picture but they give an illusion of depth because the sizes of the arches are different although our brain kind of thinks that yeah they're the same thing therefore they're probably the same size so just the fact that they're in different sizes in the 2d photo that tells you that it's farther away the smaller one is farther away um, another example is like the moose, for example, Mount Rush moose. Um, once you get to that, you'll, um, you'll see that there are two mooses. I think that's the plural of moose. Um, there are two mooses and one is larger and the other is smaller. So you kind of know, it, even though you don't really see the ground that they're stepping on, you kind of know that the smaller moose is further away. Let me see if I can get, if I can get back in. Um, Buffy, can you can can everybody um, just say out, or just just say out in public chat if you're you're done viewing the pictures? Just don't get distracted about the other links in there. <laughs> um, and but if you've you've seen the pictures, give me a cue maybe to continue. Continue. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, to go on to slide 23, please. Uh, we'll go through collusion and uh, roots. And collusion is really just very simple. Um, in the slides, if it's already up, you'll see on the left side the, the blue and the red circles. And you can't, and they're 2D, they're very 2D, they're very flat. You can't really tell if, um, okay, thank you. Let me sit down. You can't really, t oh, I'm in the wrong place. You can't really tell, oh, okay, let me, <laughs> sorry. Let me sit down, otherwise we can't see the slide. Okay, let's go through this fast. Did I miss it? Oh, I wanted to show this. Hold on a second. Let me back up here. I wanted to show this slide. Is it there yet? Um, oops, I went past it. Too many clicks. Is there a way to get to a specific slide? with the system. Okay. 
Okay, it's not letting me do this. I have to do it slow. Um, there's, I wanted to show you, um, I wanted to go back to the slide where there's the converging um, lines because I wanted to show you another trick in there. Um, which I forgot to talk about, sorry about that. Um, there's, what you'll find is there's a way to um, control the distance as it, as it shows in your screen. Um, I know that you probably, you probably have tried it with, with Alt F9 or one of those, but you can actually do it also in the photo tools. Oh, don't, don't, don't stop, 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 stop. Okay, it keeps going. It won't stop. The slides won't stop. You know, um, let me let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and create one. Can I create? Okay, I just need to sh do. Oops, just make this faster here because this is taking. Well, I figured this out. Yes, <laughs> it's not. It won't stop. Um, so let me put my slides on just a prim and just just do it this way. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I think we're on number 23. Oh no, not that. Um, we want to go back to 18, 16, 17, 17. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're back in business. Um, so, so let me, okay. There. What did I say? It was 17. Okay, let's try 18. Okay, here's 18. Now, in this in this slide, you can see there's there's my avatar Opal in Second Life, and in the back behind me, you'll see a very small avatar. That's my Alt Hi Ho. Um, what you can do with if you go in um, in in the depth of field dialog at the photo. I'm sorry, depth of field tab in the photo tools dialog at the top line and the, the very first option th there is the view angle and the default is usually 1.047 um, that's this is how it looks like and it usually what it does is I don't use it I don't use the default anymore because usually when you have your image on the edges um, it becomes distorted there's another, that's another reason but I'll show you another way to kind of make Sites full bright. Okay, hold on. Um, to kind of make it um, to control it, so that you can also have a um, um, another way of of showing depth or another way of um, making your 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 images um, more unique or have a different aspect, a different feel to it. And I'll show you an example. I have one example. I don't use use this often, but I'll show you one really. Um, extreme example. So there's this is 1.047 at this setting. So if I move it up, if I move it down, I'm sorry, if I move it down to 0 0.8, you notice that HiO is start starts to get bigger, and it starts to get come closer to to the foreground. And if you also notice that the um, the lines the Horis, what are they? No, not, not the ones going to the foreground, but the circle, the, the square ones, um, are also becoming more compressed. So that's what's happening as you move along, as you reduce that number. And here is 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and 0 0.4. 
four, and see how it's coming really close, and zero point two. You see the difference? Zero point, let's see. Zero point, let's go back over 18. From that to that. And you also, you might also notice that my face um, is also changing. That's because it's less distorted the closer you get, the, the smaller you get. Um, I haven't, so I've, I've tried, um, I've tried this with one of my images. Let me get the link. And where did I put it? Oh no, I lost my link. Oh, here we go. I'm going to put it up on um, on chat. I hope everybody. Oh, let me let me. It's um. I hope everybody can hear that, or maybe what is. Let me see if I can shout it. Is it shift enter? Oops, nope. That was a whisper. Oops, nope. <laughs> okay, hold on. Sorry, <laughs> there's a shout. <laughs> okay. okay, there's a shout. I hope everybody heard that. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Okay, so... Um, so that's that. Yes, this is as 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 all ten B. That's actually um, the turtle is actually farther away. Yes, but yes, yes. This is turtle isle. It's actually farther away. But by using um, this this technique, I was able to kind of bring it really really close. It looks more um, le more. It looks more. Um, uh, I can't remember. I can't think of the word. It looks more impressive. I mean, like it's like a huge rock coming really close. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Um, so that's that's one way that you can do one way you can use that technique. So you're you're. It's not just that you're 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 showing depth, but you're also be, you're also able to control it. You're also able to control at least the distance of what how things look like. And you can also go the opposite way by increasing that number, so it will look farther away. But then you also have to be careful not to put it too close to the edges of the picture because then it gets really distorted towards the edges if you make it too far away. Unless that's what you want to do, of course. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's go to next slide. Um, 23, is it this one? Okay, now let's talk about this one. About uh, collusion. So if you look on the left side of the, of the, of the top, Part, you see two circles, a blue one and a red one, and they look like they're right next to each other. But if you go on the right side, these are, they're still the same image, they're still the same size, um, but I just put the red one over the blue one, and so it's, it, you, you see, you think, you know, your brain thinks that, oh yes, the red one is in front of the blue one. So that's what collusion is. It's very simple. Um, this, the bottom one is about, I call it roots, I don't really know what the technical term is for this one. But if you see something like this, you're kind of thinking, um, the blue one is in front and the red one is in the back. But really, these are just flat images and they're just moving up in, in diagonally. They're all the same size. It's not even the size thing. Um, so that's, that's another way that you can kind of fool the brain to think that, oh yes, the red one is in the back. So, so this this is very simple. So these two ones are are very simple. Now about okay. Now let, let's let's talk about shaders and shadows. Um, 
uh, most of us usually say when we say shadows, we also refer to the to the darkness on the opposite side, like the you know, like the shadow on the side of the moon that's not lit by the sun, for example. But for but for now, for here, we'll call it a shade, a shading instead of a shadow, and we'll call the shadow something that is that falls onto another object. So. So we'll talk about shaders and shadows here, and that's also going to affect how everything looks. In this picture, there's actually Opal is actually standing in front of a skull. Really, really, I, mean, I swear, it, she's standing in front of a, of a skull. But the difference is, the thing is with this, is that um, I'm using a wind light that, that takes away all that. The only reason that Opal looks um, normal is because of the built-in shade sh shadings on on her outfit and you get that oh, okay I'm using look, let me go through here I'm using the ambient white um, wind light setting which is one of the defaults in Firestorm but what I usually do is I, I modify it um, on the bottom side I don't know how it's just if you can see this clearly because it's really fuzzy on my screen um, but on the bottom on the, on the bottom middle, so not really the bottom, but on the middle right side of the screen is where you can either create a new uh, wind light or edit an existing one. Usually, wh what you, if you already have something and you're playing with the wind light already, if you create, um, if you tell it to create a new one, it will take whatever settings you have at that point. And it brings up this dialogue on the left side, on the upper left hand side. The reason that you cannot see the skull is because of the of the part here that I have highlighted on the left side. That's the sun moon section and the ambient section. What, what the sun moon color is, is the color of the light. Um, if you want it to be pure white, it's, you can you can have it white or a little bit gray, because white can be too overwhelming. But the ambient is usually darker, and that's what shows you the shades. So because it's reversed in here, then that's why you cannot see the shadow. So let me say sorry. So you cannot see the skull. So let me show you the next slide where we show a little bit. It shows a little bit because I reversed the white and black on the left side as the sun moon color and the ambient then it starts showing you the shades because now the shades are black as they're supposed to be so that's so now that you can because of that you can see the shape you can see the 3d shape of the skull that's another way to add depth um, and then we'll do one more thing I hope it's 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 coming up fast enough for you guys because I if it comes up for me, then I, I move on. Let me know if I'm going too fast with um, switching slides. This one is the same thing, but all I did is change the sunlight, the direction of the sunlight or the direction of the sun. So instead of being in, in um, sunset like before, let me go back to the previous one. So before I look down below here, Oh, good. Thank you. Um, look down below here. The the uh, the picture of the of the sun is right at sunset. So it's like five o'clock something. Um, but in the next one, I moved it up. So it's closer to noon. So it's early afternoon. And then the the, the shadows moves. Like in this screen, you can actually already see the the sockets of the eyes. And then we'll do a little bit more. And in this time, what I did is I changed the position of the east. And there's also another way that you can enhance how the, sh the shading looks in the object that you're trying to feature. And I, I do this all the time. In every image that I do, I play around with the sun position because that's you find the, the perfect way, the perfect, perfect position for the sun where it just hits it just the right way and it looks great and sometimes it just washes it out so you play with it even when um, what, what with, with the images that you're doing even if it doesn't seem like it's pertinent to whatever you're trying to do um, the only the only thing about this though is that you you sometimes it, the sun doesn't come through if you're inside a building so it's usually best to do it outdoors or if you're if you have your own studio then open it up open up the top or open up the walls so that you can have this the the right shadows coming in and in the next slide I can't see let me see 
I have a few more of this one. In this one now, I turned on, okay, now we go back to the right side, the dialog on the right side. What I did is, I just turned on advanced lighting. Before, I didn't have it on. Now, I turned on advanced lighting, and I chose uh, sun and moon shadows. That's all it is. So now, Opal, see if you notice Opal's um, shadow, it kind of follows the the curve of the skull. So that's another way that you can see that there's something there that's 3D, even though you don't fully, even if you don't see the back part of the skull, you kind of know that there's something there that distorted the shadow. So then you kind of see, the, oh, can I also see the shape of whatever it is that's there. Um, and there's a couple more here, oh, maybe a few more. This one I have, um, oh, it's just the same one. Oh, this one I turned on um, local lights. I have two projectors actually um, in the set, and it's not very obvious, but if you probably, I don't know if you can see it here, if you're probably pulling closer, um, you'll be able to see there's actually an overlap there. The problem with projectors, the shadows for projectors, is that um, they only, they're only obvious if the background that it's falling on is also dark. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. So you have to kind of also play with the, how much light you put on it. But as we, as we go along, you'll see more and more depth added to the picture, the image. Oh, there we go. There's a little bit more. There you see, see it a little bit more. And in this one... Hi everybody, I think Opal crashed out of Skype for a second, so... Hopefully we can get her back before uh we head to the end but if but i might suggest too while we're here that maybe if you guys have questions you can kind of pre-populate those into chat as well that way when she does get back in uh we'll have those waiting for her
Hi Puffy, can you hear? Hello, Puffy. No, oh, I'm here. I'm here. Hi. Okay. So uh, I thought uh, Opal was was coming back, but it doesn't look like it uh, that uh, we're going to be able to get her back. She crashed, and you know how this goes sometimes. We've got um, a lot of technology happening, a lot of things going on, and you know sometimes to me it's just amazing it works at all. So. Um, what I'll do is I will uh, make sure that I get all the questions and I'll pass them on to Opal and I'll have her get back to you, uh, hopefully before the, the uh, conference ends or maybe I'll get her to um, post it on her website or, or however, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you on that anyways. And um, I have uh, two minutes I can talk about the suitcase uh, for those of you who are interested because I didn't know anything. I came in here blind. Uh, for OpenSim 2, just kind of wandered around, and the suitcase gets created the first time you go to another grid, and um, and anything in the suitcase, it looks like that's what gets copied over to the other grid, so if you want a landmark, um, it'll go in the landmark folder if you create it on a different sim. I don't think it's called sim or grid. Oh, you know, I get those mixed up, but anyways, uh, if you go to a different place. How's that? Just a plain old place. Um, yeah, so look for that suitcase folder the first time you grid hop. And, you know, a good one to go to is uh, Fleep grid, grid. If you go to the landing zones um, and look around, there is a platform area with all the links to all the uh, different grids you can hop to. And um, it's lots of fun hopping around. Sometimes things don't make it, but, you know, again, it's new technology. So, we have uh, a little bit of time for me to even do my little closing script here, so <laughs> uh, bear with me. I'll just um, say what I was going to say, and we can wrap this up. So I really want to thank Opal, when, and I will in, when I see her, uh, for all those little tricks to make us better at being virtual photographers. I can't wait to put them in practice, and I, and I hope everyone here learns something here today, too. Next up in Breakout Zone 1 is Annabelle Fanshaw, who will teach us how to make content with a minimum of stress with her session called Using the Build It Once Approach to Making Content for the Metaverse. I'm really looking forward to this one, too. Um, I met Annabelle here. I can't believe here when we were setting up, and I can't believe, you know, I was offering her hair and, you know, asking her, has she ever oh, grid hop before and stuff? Uh, my goodness, you know, she's been doing it for, for years and years and years. So... Um, I know it's going to make life a little easier for us down the line. And as a reminder, you can see what's coming up on the schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And um, there's lots of exciting things happening uh, this afternoon, going to the Air Force grid. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, too. So, And please do take a moment, if you can, to, to hop around to, um, not hop, don't hop, because we're on the same grid here, but um, teleport to the... Uh, sponsor grids, they've really put a lot of effort into making it uh, wonderful builds over there. And uh, All right, so thanks again, and everyone have fun wherever you go next, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, bye.